Hi, readers. It's Lori. Welcome back. And here is the most anticipated reads fiction list for July. I'm not going to tell you how many I have. It's a lot. I don't want you to freak out. It just may end up being in two parts, or I may end up taking some off. We'll just see what happens. But there's a lot of great books coming out in July, I think. And let's see if you do too. So the first one is Weird, Weird, Weird. It is by Lisa Jewell. It is a new series that she's coming out with. And it's a Marvel comic series. And it is called Breaking the Dark. It comes out on July 2nd. This is about Jessica Jones, who is a retired superhero. And she's kind of lost her way a little bit. She's not doing a whole lot. She's not getting out with people. She's probably drinking too much. And a woman comes to her and asks her to help with her twins. The children went to visit their dad in, U in the UK and something happened when they came back. They were different. They were indeed physically different and different in other ways too. In fact, they are now perfect and something's wrong because they weren't perfect when they left her. Jessica Jones decides to take on the case and figure out what uh, impacted their <laughs> change and how this can be solved. So Breaking the Dark, again, comes out on July the 2nd. If you're a fan of Lisa Jewell, know that this is a different Lisa Jewell in many ways, but it sounds fun to me. And if you're a fan of Marvel comics, which we are uh, in our household, this might be right up your street. So the next book is The Lion Women of Tehran by Marjan Kamali. And this one has a really high rating thus far. And she's a very powerful, well-known author with, with deep and, and heartbreaking and really just impactful reads. This one is historical fiction. It is set in the 1950s in Tehran. A young girl named Ellie, who is seven, is living a pretty grand life in the home that they have. They're pretty affluent people. And then her father dies and they are forced to move to a, another home downtown uh, because of the loss, I guess, of his income. When they're downtown on the first day of her new school, she meets a woman, a child named Homa, who was her age as well. And she and Homa really hit it off and they have this great relationship until she later moves. Then she and Homa, I think, are reunited in the future. And this is a coming of age story, but also a story about women and friendship and challenge. And it sounds really good to me. And it's got a beautiful cover. I mean, honestly, that's just stunning. Number three is uh, by John Mars. It comes out on July 9th. I haven't read anything by John Mars yet. And I have a couple of books of his on, I think my Kindle Unlimited, or maybe I purchased one on Kindle, but I haven't yet gotten to any of them. But this one is called The Family Experiment. <laughs> and it is so fascinating to me. So thriller, sci-fi, dystopian novel about the overcrowding of people <laughs> that is creating an overwhelming economic crisis. And in the UK, they have had enough. So they realize that people can no longer afford to have a family. They create an alternative experience, which is a virtual child that you can be with on a virtual, you know, uh, headset, which I actually have one of those. So this is just really creepy to me. These children then become, you know, really special and people are really kind of thinking, is this something that I really want to do? But for those who aren't keen on it yet, they create this reality show called The Substitute and they follow this number of parents who have these virtual children to see, you know, to tell the story and to see if they can make this work. And they do it in a, from birth to 18 in a nine month period. So that's how long the show lasts for. That's how long that they're filming them. So they don't have a lot of time to create from an infant to an 18 year old. And if they win, the prize is that they get to keep their virtual child or they can risk it in the chance that they can actually have a, a, a baby of their own. Now there's some confusion for me about whether or not they are banned from having children or whether or not they're just not having children because it's so scary. But still the premise of this is quite unique and I'm quite fascinated by it. So again, that's the family experiment by John Mars and it comes out on July 9th. This 
Uh, next one is called Humor Me by Kat Shook. This also comes out on July 9th. This cover is also stimulating. This is set in New York City, which is one of my favorite places. And it is one of the places where a lot of stand-up comedy occurs and these different comedy shows that are produced still now, late night shows, those kinds of things. And so this one is about a woman named Presley Fry. She's been kind of dragging along on this late night show for a while, and she's really kind of not giving it her all. And she's not dating. She's not connected to a lot of people. She's just feeling like her life is kind of bleh. But she does love stand-up comedy. I mean, she loves her job. She's just she's just kind of drifting. So she meets Susan Clark, who is the childhood best friend of Presley's mom who passed away. And Susan Clark has a an opportunity for her. And she wants to help her kind of interact and be with people more and just enjoy the city and enjoy the work that she does. And she also wants her to date her son, Lawrence. Humor Me is kind of a, it's a contemporary fiction. It's humorous. It sort of shows us the ways in which people can interact with us and change our lives, whether that's for the good or the worse, I don't know, but it sounds like it might be for the better. So this one looked pretty fun to me and maybe a nice little romance kind of read possibly. The next one is called The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst, not to be confused with The Sex Spell Shop, which has a number of books in the series. So I just want you to be clear, this is not the same book, <laughs> but this is a romanticy, which is becoming very popular these days. And uh, it it really features a character named Keela, who's not great with people, but she's a librarian. So she really, you know, doesn't necessarily have to completely engage with people, but she's able to sequester herself with a magical plant named Kaz. And they just go through spell books. They just are really kind of, I guess, in charge of that part of the library, which is kind of funny. It's called the Library of Elysium. And the library then goes up in flames and she and Kaz have to flee with all of the spell books that they can get out of the library on their own. And they go to a remote island. This is Keela's childhood home. This is where she grew up. So she realizes that the bakery in town doesn't have jam. And she feels like jam is an important thing, I guess, for a bakery to have. So she creates a jam with her parents' old spell book that she found. And what they're saying is a bit of illegal magic. And this jam is like incredible. And so then she opens up her own little secret spell shop. It is an adult, cozy romanticy. So that is what you can expect from this. But it's it sounds cute. It sounds fun. Okay, the next one is a debut novel. And it comes out on July 9th as well. And it's called Lenny Marks Gets Away with Murder by Karen Maine. And I have to say, this is one of the ones that I really want to get to. The tagline for this is Lenny Marks is excellent at not having a life. So she actually does the same things every day. She goes home. She buys the same things. She reads the same book. She plays Scrabble against an imaginary Monica Geller, of all things, while she watches Friends reruns, which I think is what pulled me right in. And she's also not remembering what happened the day her parents disappeared when she was a child. And there was a voice in the back of her head that said, you did this. So later she gets a letter from the parole board. And I don't know what happens as a result of that. And I don't necessarily want to know, but this is mystery, fiction, thriller, a bit of contemporary, and it's set in Australia, which is always kind of a I don't know. It's a place I enjoy reading books that are set in that space. So Lenny Marks gets away with murder or does she? We don't know. Another one a lot of people have sent to me in advance of its release because they know that this will probably delight me too. This comes out on the 9th of July and this is called Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle. It already has a 4.53 rating, and it's only been rated by 300 people. This one is a horror, queer, fiction, adult, contemporary, definitely adult from what I understand. So Misha is a script writer, and he's been working in Hollywood and been fa fairly successful at this for a while, and he's just been nominated for an Oscar. So his career is really landing into that space, and his producers are asking him telling him 
to kill off one of the characters in one of his series finales. And they're saying that it's better for the algorithm. And so he has to decide what to do. I'm assuming it sounds fantastic. There is another book actually called Bury Your Gaze as well. So be sure if you're looking for this one to look for the author who is Chuck Tingle. All This and More by Peng Shepard comes out on July 9th as well. This one made me squeal when I read the plot of it. I read The Cartographers. I haven't read anything else yet by Peng Shepard. I think that I will, though. I hear good things about The Book of M. But this one is really twisty, really weird, really fascinating. (laughs) This is a choose-your-own-adventure, readers. Let me set this up for you. Marsh is kind of miserable. She's just turned 35, 45. Her life is going nowhere in the way that she wants it to go. She's been divorced. She's had a number of things that she chose to do that she now regrets. And she's basically just feeling like she needs a do-over. And then she's selected to be a part of a global sensation reality show called All This and More, where they use quantum technology to allow contestants the chance to choose a different pathway to see what would happen in their lives if they do this. And Marsh is determined to win this game. A lot of things happen, but what I love about this is you, the reader, in the moment, choose which outcome will happen as a result of what Marsh does next. So it is, again, a choose your own adventure. You pick if Marsh is going to marry this person, then you go to this page. If Marsh is going to take this job, then you go to that page. It sounds absolutely delightful and fun and like a game in a book. And I can't wait. Kate Quinn, The Briar Club. I think this synopsis might be my favorite of Kate Quinn's. And so it had to go on the list. This one also comes out on July 9th. I love this cover. It is set in Washington, D.C. in the 1950s during the McCarthy era. Female friendships. There's four women, I think, who all live at Briar House. And they say that Briar House is a place where secrets hide behind white picket fences. So it looks like a great place, but there's some things going on. They all have some problems. They all have some difficulties for themselves and some with their family and their work. And so they are trying to be with each other to kind of get support and heal each other from what's happening in their lives. And then something happens to the house and someone's out to get them, I think. The next one is called The Wilds and it's by Sarah Pierce and it's the third in her Ellen Warner detective series. I own first two books in this series on audio, but I haven't read them yet. So I will not pick this up for sure until I have gotten to one or both of those to see if I like them. This one actually made the Reese's Book Club pick for the month that it's coming out. So that's exciting. A woman named Keir Templer is kind of incognito a lot of the time because her mother was a criminal and she leaves her hometown and her twin to stay away from the hype around what her mother did. But then she goes off the grid and she can't be found. And so her twin ends up contacting Ellen to see what happened to her. And Ellen happens to be in Portugal on a vacation and she's nearby where this occurred. So she, I guess, agrees to take the case and discover some things that are, you know, pretty intense. I don't think any of these three are related to each other in a way that wouldn't allow you to read them out of order. I don't know, but I really am just trying to read my backlist. So I'm going to start with the sanatorium, which is the first one, and then I'll see um, how that goes for the next one. Okay. The next one is The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer. Meg Schaefer is a bit of a polarizing author. And that first book of hers, The Wishing Game, was also kind of a hit and miss, depending on who you are. I actually really loved it a lot, but not everyone does. So I get that. Also, she got some bad press because she entered herself in as a debut novel author for the Goodreads Choice Award. And then it was discovered that she had been writing under a pen name for another pen name, maybe for a long time, or maybe that was her real name. I don't know. But The Lost Story comes out on July 16th as well. And like the other one, this one is some magical realism. It is written, though, for adults, and it is a mystery. And it's about two boys named Rafe and Jeremy who go missing in a forest. And years later, they are reunited, and they have a homecoming, and everything's going great. But 
there's a story behind what happened and where they were and wh who they were with. And so that is the story that unfolds in this novel. So it sounds like a great title. So on that note, readers, I'm going to disappear for a little while and let this be part one. And I will come back to you with part two with the rest of my most anticipated reads for the month of July in the fiction category very soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know which ones of these books are really sparking your interest and desire to read. I'm always curious about that. And as always, happy reading. See you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.